Episode 558 Short on Luck Inspire Charity was known for inviting only the most influential people of the year. Their goal was to pick celebrities and public figures who would inspire others to participate in charity as well. Because the organization had an international presence, Eric worried about the kind of message it would send if she rejected the invitation. He also worried about her traveling all the way to the Netherlands now that she was reaching the end of her second trimester. Emma was also nervous about the travel involved, given that she would be almost six months pregnant. Perhaps we should just reject the invitation, Eric said. I can ask Luke to send a polite rejection and a generous donation as an apology. Is that all right with you? I know attending this event would help your award nomination, but it doesn't seem like it makes sense right now. That's fine with me, she replied. Do you think I'm being overprotective? He asked. I know that you have thought that in the past. She shrugged. No, I appreciate your advice. You're my manager and my husband. So you look out for both my career and my safety, she answered. While I can't imagine you going so far away right now, I am worried that you're getting bored, cooped up in the house all the time. Eric said. She pulled his hand over her heart so she could feel how it raced when she was in his embrace. Do you know how much I love you? Whether our life is busy or simple, I'll be happy as long as I'm with you, she said. He smiled. Hearing how satisfied she was, had erased the worry from his mind. You know what? Eric said. Maybe we should accept the invitation and go to the Netherlands. We can have one last vacation alone before we become parents. Are you all right with that? I think that's a great idea, Emma responded. Eric called Luke to make the arrangements, filled with a new determination to stop worrying so much and enjoy what was in front of him. Andrea's husband was a famous philanthropist with questionable connections. He had invited Emma to the Inspire Charity event specifically to see if she was actually pregnant. Ever since the award nominee list had come out, Andrea had been studying the careers and films of her competitors. The other three competitors were textbook examples of people who had worked their way through the industry. Emma, on the other hand, had jumped straight to major success. To make matters worse... She had come out with two blockbuster films, one right after the next. Emma had talent, determination, and resources. Andrea felt more threatened than ever. When Andrea's manager found out that Emma had accepted the invitation, he called Andrea to notify her. She'll be coming, but her husband will be with her, he added. Should we plan to distract him? If you have an idea, go for it, Andrea replied. She heard that Eric was very much in love with Emma, 
but she had a hard time believing it. She had never personally witnessed genuine love in the entertainment industry. Every relationship she had seen or experienced had just been an exchange of bodies, money, or favors. If Kaleidoscope risked going bankrupt, I doubt he would stay at her side, Andrea said. But on the off chance that what people said about him was true, she decided to keep him out of the way while she dealt with Emma. Because of the rough conditions she had grown up in, she had street smarts that the trust fund celebrities lacked. She had picked up ways of getting what she wanted from the criminals who had surrounded her. She had met many smart people before, but she refused to believe that anyone could outsmart her. She certainly didn't have the moral boundaries that limited most people. Ultimately, her plan was simple. She would force Emma to choose between her award nomination and her child. Andrea knew raising the stakes would help her get what she wanted. But first, she needed to find a way to lure Emma to her. To avoid being noticed, Eric and Emma disguised themselves when they went to the airport, and they left for the Netherlands a day earlier than they needed to. They celebrated their success when they arrived at the hotel, unaware of the danger that was fast approaching. At the Baines household, Janet was already celebrating her victory. Andrea had given her a little hint of the plan, and Janet seriously doubted that Emma would pick an award over her child. She looked up to see Claire standing in the doorway, glaring at her. Janet's humming had tipped Claire off to the fact that she was planning something sinister. What? Am I not allowed to be in a good mood? Janet asked. Claire narrowed her eyes, but didn't respond. Janet laughed. You just wait and see. Emma's luck has finally run out, she said. Claire raised her eyebrows in doubt. She had seen Emma prevail too many times to believe that she would lose now. She wondered who had truly run out of luck and just didn't know it yet. Episode 559 A Mediocre Kidnapping Although Eric and Emma had checked in early, they hadn't managed to arrive before Andrea had set her trap. From a distance, she spotted Emma in the lobby and was able to confirm that she was indeed pregnant. While her bump may have taken a while to show, it was pretty obvious now that she was six months along. Andrea disliked Emma but that didn't mean that she didn't respect her. She knew that Emma's reputation and success were due to cleverness and determination, but she couldn't understand why so many people considered her loyal and genuine. She must be faking it, Andrea thought. No real friendships can survive in such a cutthroat industry. Andrea had people watching Emma around the clock. As soon as Eric left the room, one of the hotel staff rang Emma's doorbell and passed her a letter. Ma'am, this is for you. I was instructed to tell you to open it alone. 
the bellhop said. He gave a polite smile and quickly scurried off. Emma read the front and discovered that it had a small line of text beneath her name. It said, Tear up this letter after you read it if you want me to keep your secret. They must be amateurs. Delivering the note right after Eric left shows me that they're watching the room, she thought. Still, what secret do they think I'm hiding, she wondered. She examined the envelope, but couldn't find anything unique or interesting about it. The note inside said, Meet me at 7 o'clock tonight at the Queen's Ballroom. I'll be waiting by the window for you. There was no name identifying the sender, but that made it seem more silly than serious to her. When Eric returned to the room, he found her laughing at the piece of paper. What's so funny? He asked, smiling at her smile. She passed him the letter. After he read it, he rolled his eyes. It feels like people are getting less creative, he complained. She wrapped her arms around him and laughed again. I agree, but it managed to get our attention. I guess I don't see any harm in playing along, she said. And I would really like to know who wants to meet me and what secret they think I'm hiding. I don't know he said hesitantly. You're acting like we're made of glass, she replied, resting a hand on her stomach. Normally, he wouldn't take something like this seriously. But now that she was so far along in her pregnancy, he was more worried about her than ever. It took a few more minutes of discussion for him to agree. Emma arrived at the ballroom right on time. She was surprised and concerned by how many bodyguards lined the room. It seemed like a waste of energy if the other person's intention was only to meet with her. What are they up to? She wondered. Andrea turned around when she noticed a shift in the expressions of the guards closest to her. Emma was clearly surprised to see her. When Emma was closer, Andrea pulled out a chair for her. Please, take a seat, she said. Andrea found Emma's lack of nervousness interesting. She had walked past the bodyguards as if they weren't there at all. Is there a reason why you wanted to meet me so urgently? Emma asked. Andrea gestured toward her baby bump. It looks like you're pregnant, she said. She had assumed that Emma hadn't announced her pregnancy because she was worried about how it would impact her career. Instead, Emma had smiled at the mention of her baby, as if she was excited. Yes, about six months, Emma answered. Andrea couldn't figure out why she seemed so relaxed and forthcoming. Why haven't you announced it? Andrea asked curiously. Emma sighed, already tired of the conversation. Can you please get to the point? The small talk is awkward, and my husband will be returning to our room soon. You have fame, fortune, a powerful husband, and a child on the way. What do you need an award for? Andrea asked. Emma smiled and looked around the room. 
Should I feel flattered that you are so scared of me that you hired all these bodyguards? She asked. Andrea ignored her question, annoyed by her calm. I'm giving you two options. Tell Eric to withdraw your nomination, or you won't be leaving here today. He's powerful, but do you think he could get you out of here? She asked, waving her hand toward all the men. Emma's expression hardened. You jumped through so many hoops to get me here, and this is all you've prepared? The only reason I decided to show up is because I thought you had something interesting to discuss with me. Andrea was shocked. Is she mad that I didn't put more effort into threatening her? She wondered incredulously. Andrea leaned forward, her determination to do whatever it took to win written across her face. Sorry my methods aren't more entertaining, but I managed to get you here, didn't I? You decide. Do you want to have a baby, or do you want the award? Episode 560, The Parking Garage Performance. You want to know something interesting, Andrea said. My last assistant fell down some stairs after I caught her having an affair with my manager. I was so sad when she miscarried, and the stairs weren't even that high. Did you know pregnancies could be that fragile? I have to say, I'm a bit disappointed by your reaction, she continued, standing to face the window. I didn't plan anything complex because I figured you've seen enough ridiculous schemes over the years. I didn't want to waste my time by overcomplicating things. She looked over her shoulder and added, Also, you don't have to worry about your husband returning to the room. He's occupied right now. Emma thought for a moment before asking, Why can't you let the judging stay fair? I don't mind giving up the award, but if I withdraw, won't winning feel less special to you? Andrea sighed. I heard you like lecturing people, she said. I don't think you understand that we want different things in life. You've got oodles of family money, and you're married to an industry leader. You could be a terrible actress, and you would still be rich and the CEO of a company. Everything I have... I had to fight for. I hope you didn't think being married to a gangster was fabulous or easy. You don't understand what it's like to know your one wrong move away from being considered dead weight, she continued. I would do anything to free myself from this life. So, make your decision. Emma looked at her carefully. The part of Emma that related to the other woman still couldn't justify how she had held her hostage and threatened her baby. I feel bad for you, but your actions prove you aren't any better than the people you hate. Emma replied, Regardless... Even if I withdraw my nomination, I still have to call Eric for him to arrange it. Andrea rolled her eyes and said, Do you think I'm stupid? 
I'm not going to wait for you to go through the proper channels and try and worm your way out of this. Where's Eric? Emma asked. Don't worry about it. He'll be fine, as long as you do what I say, Andrea replied. It may be your game, but you need to follow some of my rules, Emma said. You're not getting anything from me until I see that he's safe and sound. You seem to know enough about me to know that I would do anything to protect my husband. Andrea met her eyes and realized Emma wouldn't back down. Fine, she spat out. Andrea had become overconfident because of her careful planning. Controlling Eric had been the least of her worries. In the process, she had underestimated what he was capable of. While Andrea and Emma faced off in the ballroom, Eric was in the parking garage having just returned from running some errands. The products available in the hotel were not familiar to him and Emma, and he wanted to make sure she felt at home. As he parked, he felt something was off in the parking garage. The garage should have been well lit, but someone had put out the lights. He sat in the car silently for a while, but when he couldn't detect any movement in the shadows, he slowly got out. Just then, he could hear the sound of footsteps and realized that several people must be closing in on him. He checked his surroundings. Seeing that he was close to the pay booth, he crouched down and weaved between the cars until the footsteps paused. The people following him had clearly lost sight of him. Figuring that he must have somehow gone out the main exit, they rushed to their car and tried to drive out. The assistant in the booth put out his hand and asked for their parking ticket his hand still a few feet away from the driver's window. Can't you stand up and reach for it? The driver asked, annoyed that they were being slowed down. The attendant went quiet and frowned. I'm sorry, but I'm in a wheelchair. That's why I got this job, so that I could stay seated, he explained. The driver resisted the urge to roll his eyes and opened his door so he could hand the attendant the ticket. As soon as the car had driven off, the attendant pulled off the hat. It was actually Eric who had ducked into the empty booth and put the attendant's hat on. He called hotel security as he grabbed his bag and headed into the hotel. Maybe I should pursue acting as a career, he thought, slightly surprised that his last-minute trick had worked. Shortly after, Andrea received a call from one of the bodyguards, informing her that they had lost track of Eric. She was furious, but tried not to show it. Lying to Emma, she said, my men have already secured your husband. Emma snorted. <laughs> I doubt it. You don't seem very confident, she replied. Even if I didn't have him, I still have you, Andrea snapped. She waved over two of her guards. Come here, she instructed. Emma tried to delay Andrea further. Why don't I just call the committee directly and withdraw from nominations, she suggested. If we keep doing what we're doing now, the stress might cause me to miscarry anyway, 
which ruins your bargaining chip. You want the award. I want my child. Why are you making this so complicated? Andrea shook her head. No, she replied. I'm not letting you off the hook that easily. Oh, of fearlessness. Episode 561. Do your worst. Andrea would go to any lengths to achieve her goals. She focused on short-term benefits instead of long-term gain. So Emma knew there was no chance of talking her out of her terrible plan. There was plenty of fighting and competition within the New York entertainment industry. But Andrea was the first to be this violent to her. The shady underworld had corrupted Andrea. And though she hadn't realized it yet, she was no better than her gangster husband. Emma screamed for help, and a woman passing by heard her cry and shoved the door open. As soon as she saw Andrea and the bodyguards, she backed out and ran away. I recognize that actress, Emma thought. She must have been invited to the event, too. I don't blame her for running, but I hope that she just bought me some time. There's no point in crying for help, Andrea said with her arms crossed. No one is going to save you. She studied Emma's face. I never thought I would get my hands on the world-famous Emma Miller. What should I do with her now? She asked. Emma felt a pang of fear as she watched the two burly bodyguards approach her. Eric will show up any time now, she thought. And then she looked at her belly. There's no way he'll let them hurt me. I know there's no point in fighting back now, she said. But if you're trying to hurt Eric, you have the wrong woman. You have overestimated my value in your little scheme. Eric doesn't care about me. He's just using me to protect the person he really loves. While you're busy toying with me here, she'll snatch the Best Newcomer Award away. Keep lying all you want, but I won't believe you, Andrea said with a laugh. I know who you are. Why would I lie now, after everything that's happened, Emma asked. If you don't believe me, then go ahead and do what you want. Just know that you're wasting your time with me. And you're putting yourself on Kaleidoscope's hit list for nothing. She opened her arms wide to taunt Andrea and said, Do what you want with me and see if Eric cares. You'll see who wins the award after you eliminate me. My life might seem glamorous, but it's all just an illusion. I'm no better off than you. Andrea paused and frowned. If Emma really is just a shield for Eric's true love, then my competition is still out there, she thought. And if news gets out that I've done something to her, they'll be on full alert. I don't want to provoke Eric's wrath for nothing. I think that Eric does love me deep down, even if I'm not the person he really wants to be with, Emma said. And I really do care for him, 
So, I don't mind sacrificing myself to help him. It's the least I can do. Go ahead. Do your worst. She closed her eyes and leaned back on the sofa with a show of fearlessness, causing Andrea to hesitate. Should we get started? The bodyguard asked. Andrea took a deep breath as alarm bells rang in her head. Let me think about it for a few minutes, she said. Keep an eye on her in the meantime. She then left the ballroom to research Emma's claims. If Eric really is involved with another woman, what can I do now? She wondered. I might have backed myself into a corner. After Andrea left, Emma had a chance to breathe for a moment, but she still had to stay alert. She knew that Eric would be there to save her soon, but she needed to buy all the time she could. Emma shuddered to think of the terrible things Andrea would do to her if Eric didn't arrive in time. She knew that she didn't have much time. Even though Andrea had left the room to think things over, she had already made up her mind. Just ten minutes later, Andrea stormed back into the ballroom, pointed to Emma as she looked at the bodyguards and said, Go ahead and do your worst, but make sure to keep her alive. I'm not done with her yet. However, before the bodyguards had a chance to make a move, two Dutch police officers burst through the ballroom doors. What's going on here? One officer asked. This is a private venue. You can't be in here without permission. The bodyguards blocked the two men from entering, confident that they could deal with them. But they froze in shock as a few dozen officers suddenly rushed in with their guns drawn and surrounded them. Even in such a tense situation, Andrea didn't get flustered. She approached the officers and said, I'm sorry for the confusion. This is all a misunderstanding. I'm just here to attend a charity event. But as a tall and imposing figure appeared behind the police, her expression changed. Eric loomed over her, forcing her to take a few steps back. He grabbed the front of her shirt and pulled her toward him, pulling her up so that she was forced to stand on her toes. Andrea almost lost her footing as she shivered with fear. She placed her hands over his wrists, but she could not budge them. It seems like there's a pest here that needs to be exterminated, Eric said, tilting his head and looking at her cautiously. Don't do this, she said, releasing her grasp and holding her hands in front of her as she surrendered. You're making a big mistake. Put her down, an officer said as he gestured for Eric to let her go. Don't do anything stupid. If you ended up getting hurt, I don't think that would bother me, he said, pulling her even closer. Letting you go will bother me more. <laughs> <laughs>